In this video, I'm going to be connecting Lightburn software up to the GI30 fiber laser by Monport. Hi everyone and welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and this is another video dedicated to the GI30 fiber laser by Monport. I'm going to cover several different methods of the setup. This way it'll pertain to your particular situation. The very first thing I'm going to do before I even look at Lightburn is I'm going to locate the USB drive that comes with the machine. I'm going to take all the files off of this drive and copy them to a folder on my computer. There's going to be a couple important files that I'll need off of this when I go to do the Lightburn setup. There's going to be two different types of people using Lightburn software. The first group of people are going to be the ones who have never installed Lightburn on their computer. For those people, I suggest downloading the free 30-day trial. When you purchase the Lightburn software for the Galvo machine, that is going to be a 130 US dollar license key. The second group of people are those who already have a version of Lightburn on their computer. For those people, don't go and buy a brand new license key for the Galvo software. Instead, upgrade your current software license key. You're also going to get a discount. Instead of $130 for the license key, it's going to be $90. This is also going to keep all of your software under one license key, making it very quick and easy when you go to renew your license. It's going to renew your software updates, not per software, but per the license key. The first method I'm going to share is for those of you who have not installed or ran EasyCAD 2 on your computer. Inside Lightburn, this area here for the machine tool list will probably be blank. Just make sure that this middle section here says choose. If it says anything other than choose, Lightburn software will not be able to detect your fiber laser machine. Mine says choose and I can proceed on to devices and find my laser. I'll expand this dialog box out a little bit and it's just going to go out and search for the machine. This might take a few seconds on your computer or it might take a minute or two. This looks correct and I'll click add device. And the next thing it's going to look for is a configuration file. I am going to import that file and this is a part of one of the files that's on this USB drive. So it's very important to know where those files are copied to. I copied all of my software under a folder called Monport GI30. I'm looking under software 15, software 15 once again, plug. The one that I'm looking for my GI30 MOPA fiber laser is going to be this config 7 file. I'll click open. Lightburn's now telling me that it is unable to locate a COR file. This is going to be a lens correction file. We're going to fix this in just a minute. I'll click next. And what would I like to call my laser machine? I'm going to call it the Monport GI30. I'm going to leave everything else the same and click next. I do want to note that it's saying that the work area is 166 millimeters squared. Even though my lens says that it's 150, this is okay and this is perfectly normal. I'll click finish and then okay. If you have no other machines connected in Lightburn, whatever you named your machine will appear right here. Mine, I am going to go through my drop down list and click on that Monport GI30, and we'll see that I'm already connected. I'm going to loop back and fix that error with that COR file. For this, I'll navigate to the top of the screen to device settings and load COR file. 
This file is something that again was located on the USB drive. It is going to be under the software 15 file folder and I'm looking for JCZ15. I'll click on that and open and okay. And just like that, I'm now ready to use the laser machine. I'm going to load in a piece of scrap metal that I have and do a couple quick test engravings. Side light burn, I'm just going to do a quick circle here. This is going to be about 16 millimeters. That looks good. I'm going to change it to fill. I'd like to do a solid engraving. I'm going to change my speed to something like 1200 millimeters per second, a power of 65%, a frequency of 50 kilohertz, and a Q pulse of 200. Before I frame this out and engrave it, I do want to make sure that it is perfectly centered within my workspace. There's two things I can do for that. With the object selected, I can hit the letter P on the keyboard and it will shift it to the center of the work area, or I can come up to this icon and move to center. This is very common practice with fiber lasers is to center the graphics directly underneath the, uh, the lens of the machine. Now that I have that set, I can frame this out and I'll see that looks fantastic. And I can switch my option on framing right now. It's uh, just doing bounds, so it's going to be a square. I can also hit contour and it will change it into uh, the round shape that we have. I like that and I'm now ready to hit start. And like that, we connected Lightburn software up to the machine and did our very first test engraving. The next method that I'm going to show you is for those of us who have been running EasyCAD 2 on our computer. The software drivers that EasyCAD 2 uses is going to be different from those that Lightburn uses. In Lightburn software, I'm going to show you what it looks like if I don't update the drivers first. This says choose, I'll click devices, find my laser, I'll click next, and it just can't go out and find the machine. I'm going to cancel out of all of this. I'm going to share with you a little software program that I use and it makes switching these USB drivers really, really quick. Zadig is a very handy program for very easily and quickly switching out USB drivers. It's specifically made for scenarios exactly like we have here. It'll ask me if I want this app to make changes on my device, and of course I do because we want to update some USB drivers. I'll click yes. And this is the small program of Zadig. The first thing I'm going to do is navigate to options, list all devices, and from this pull down menu, I want to find USB LMCV4, where or yours might say V2. With that selected, it has driver here, and then it's going to switch it to Windows USB driver version 6. Point something, something, something. This is exactly what I'm looking for. And I'm going to click replace driver. Only click that once. This may take about 30 seconds or it may take several minutes for it to update this driver. We can see I've got the little blue spinning wheel, meaning that this program is running in the background and it is saying not responding, but it is working. I'll patiently just wait for this to complete everything out. I'll have a notification saying when it has successfully updated the USB driver. Here's that notification I was waiting for on my computer. It took about one minute. I'll hit close and I can close that program out. The USB driver has been updated and now Lightburn will be able to auto detect my GI30 fiber laser. I'll make sure that this middle box says choose. Once again, if this says anything other than choose, Lightburn will not be able to auto detect the laser machine. This looks good and I'll click on devices, find my laser, I'll click next. And unlike before, it's now going out and searching for my fiber laser across a USB cable. I found that Lightburn when auto detecting a fiber laser may take up to one to two minutes. 
Right on cue, it found my laser. I'm going to expand this dialog box out a little bit. And here's the fiber laser. I'm going to see that it's saying that the lens is 110 millimeter square, whereas the lens on the machine itself is 150. That's okay. We're going to correct that a little bit later on. This looks good, and I'm going to click Add Device. It's now going to say that it is going to look for this Mark Config 7 file. I'll import that. And again, that is one of the files that's located on this USB drive. And I'll navigate to that folder where I copied all of those files and I'll go to Software 15. And it's typically located under a file folder called Plug. Here is that file, Mark Config 7. That's the one I'm looking for and I'll click Open. Lightburn has a warning for me saying that it cannot locate the COR file. That COR file is for the specific lens correction file for this 150 millimeter lens. That too, we're going to loop back in just a minute. This looks good and I'll click next. And what would I like to call my laser? Once again, I'm going to call it the Monport GI30. I'm also going to see that it's calling out the work area of the machine, 166 millimeters squared. And again, the lens is 150. I am going to leave this alone. Again, that COR file is going to take care of this for us. I'll click Next. And here's a recap of everything. I like the way that this looks. I'll hit Finish. OK. Now I can come over to my machine tool list and find the machine that we just configured, the Monport GI30. And I'll see that it is already connected. So pretty quickly, Lightburn software is connected up to the machine. I'm going to loop back to that COR file. To do this, I'll navigate to the top of the screen to device settings and load COR file. This file is located under software 15. When I double click on that, here is a file, jcz15.cor. This is the file I'm looking for, and I'll click Open. I pop that in, and I can click OK. And now, Lightburn is fully configured up to the laser machine. I'll type in some sample text here. And I'll make this just a little bit smaller. And part of standard practice with working with a fiber laser, we tend to have our work graphics always centered directly underneath the lens. And I can hit either the lettered key P, or I can navigate to the top of the screen and pull this menu down and move to center of page. That looks good. And I will frame this out. I like the way that that looks. I'll put my safety glasses on and tell it to run. I just love that sound. Getting Lightburn set up and configured to run with a fiber laser machine, it's pretty straightforward. There's only a couple of extra steps, and most people get hung up looking for that COR file or that Mark Config 7 file. I hope that this video helped you out. If it did, please consider giving it a like, subscribe to the channel, and definitely ring that notification bell. This video is part of a video series all dedicated to the GI30 by Monport. Upcoming videos are going to include getting to know Lightburn and the fiber laser machine better. I'm also going to be doing some color marking on stainless steel and installing a rotary unit on the laser machine. Until next time, learn, create, and share.